Hi, this is Sarah from Sashay Reads, and I've been uploading my videos sporadically. I pre-filmed a bunch of videos back in the winter, December break area, and I've been uploading them as I have time throughout the semester, and right now I'm on spring break, so I figure I'd talk about some of the books that I did not get to talk about with my pre-filming. Um, so let's kind of reflect for a second. So. The year of 2016 for me as a reading year was really, really good. Um, I read a lot of amazing books. Uh, I found some books that personally changed my life, like 1984, The Handmaid's Tale, um, Daughter of the Forest, and the list goes on and on. But the last three books that I read in 2016, which I'll be talking about in this video, were not books that really did anything for me. In fact, I if you ask me how I felt about them, I would say I kind of hate them, but hate is a strong word. So I don't hate them, but I don't really like them, and I don't know if I would recommend them or not. So this is more a video about books I did not like reading. So I have three books to talk about. The first book I have to talk about is called Breaking Nova by Jessica Sorensen. I was sent this book for review by NetGalley. I've had it on my Kindle for a very long time. I've been meaning to read it since I was sent it for review, I think, back in 2014. Finally got to it in 2016. Um, I did not like it. I actually DNF'd it. I read about 33% and then I skim read the rest. So I know what happens in the story. Like, I am aware of everything that unfolds and what I found out while reading and skimming I did not like. So, um, I have a review for it. I will leave my link down below for the review, but I'm gonna kind of talk a little bit about why I DNF'd it. So there will be spoilers here. Um, I personally really like Jessica Sorensen, but she's been a little bit of a hit or miss in a author for me. I really, really enjoyed The Coincidence of Callie and Caden. I thought that was a great story. I gave it four stars, if I remember correctly, maybe 3.5. I was not a fan of The Secret of Ella and Michael. Micah. I did not like that one. I think I gave it two stars. And this one, Breaking Nova, I gave 1.25 stars, and I DNF'd it. So, like, it's just not for me. Some reasons why Breaking Nova is not for me is the overarching story with drug addiction. Um, I do enjoy drug addiction stories, but the way that Jessica Sorensen painted it in this story, I did not, I couldn't really get behind, and, um, in the end, uh, Quentin and Nova are in this relationship, and they both lost people, um, traumatically that they were in relationships with. Um, Nova lost her boyfriend to suicide and Quentin lost her his girlfriend in a car accident where he was the the one driving. Can't remember if he was drunk or not but she was definitely intoxicated when she was next to him in the car and um, he becomes a drug dealer and like it all becomes up to her at the end, like, she goes off to college and she has to go back in the sequel to save him. And they're gonna be together forever. She's gonna make it all better because drug addiction can be saved through love. Now, that is true, drug addiction can be saved through love. You need love and support, right? But, I don't like how Sorensen uses this as a plot device, and not as an actual story, so I have a lot of issues with that. And not only that, but Nova's friend, Delilah, is an absolutely horrible person. She, I, I have quotes here on my review, and I'll link this down below so you can kind of read while I'm talking maybe. Um, she says, Nova, what the hell, you're totally spacing out on me, in the middle of Nova's panic attack. Now, I've had friends who've had panic attacks near me. I have personally had panic attacks near friends. And to go off and get mad at a friend while they are physically panicking over something is absolutely cruel. And not only that, but if you're a friend, a true friend, you won't want to see your friend in such discomfort and you'll try to make things better. To go further, she, um, she talks about how Nova, after she was in this depressive state because her boyfriend killed himself, she goes, it was so hard being your friend. 
You don't tell a person that. You don't make it about you. You Your friendship should never be a one-sided coin. And if you do ever have somebody say, it's hard being your friend, that person's not your friend. It shouldn't be hard to be your friend. Being your friend should be the easiest thing in the world for them. You're going to have tough times. But if somebody ever comes up to you and says that, they're not a true friend. I don't really care to know if Nova and Delilah ever realized that they were not friends. From what I understand, they all become drug addicts except for Nova. Somehow Nova ends up becoming the miraculous one here. And she comes up on top of everything. But I'm just... No. No thank you. No. The next story I read was At the Mountains of Madness by H.P. Lovecraft. Y'all, At the Mountains of Madness is so damn big for a H.P. Lovecraft story. Like, for anyone else, his story's probably, like, especially At the Mountains of Madness, it seems very short, but for him, it is so long. I think it's a hundred... It's 186 pages. That's long for him. He usually writes um, 30 to 80, sometimes 100 pages at the most. So this was like, I guess, a chunker for him. I did not like it. At the Mountains of Madness has its usual H.P. Lovecraft flair of, ooh, oh, this is so horrifying and scary. And there are these creatures, and what are we going to do? I don't know how to describe it. It's so ungodly. Duh. But then it has a lot of geological explanations. I don't care about the stratosphere. I don't care about the rock embeddingment in the Antarctica. I don't care. And there were paragraphs upon paragraphs of each prehistoric era that these rocks could have formed in and I don't care. So two, two stars with that one. That is my least favorite Lovecraft I have ever encountered. I did not like it. The next one is Where I Am the Black Sheep. Um, it is a list of cages by Robin Rowe. Everyone absolutely adores this one. I have a review for it. I suggest you read it more because I'm going through my thoughts on this kind of rapidly. But um, a list of cages felt like a Perks of Being a Wallflower ripoff to me. It featured a freshman in high school who has signs very similar to autism and mental trauma. And he makes friends with older kids who are seniors. And, I don't know, like, I I liked Julian. I thought he was a good character. I did not like Adam. Adam was the other point of the dual perspective. I thought his point of view was pointless. I did not care for him. I didn't really need his point of view until maybe the last half of the book. So I really thought he could have been cut. Um, and then not only that, but I felt a lot of the trauma Julian experienced was outlandish. It seemed like everyone was out to get him, including teachers, and I do not like that portrayal. I personally want to be an educator, and so when people have novels where teachers ignore, berate, or purposely bully and target children, I don't like that. I think that's absolutely distasteful. If there's a teacher like that at your school, get them fired. That is not okay. And the fact that this is like a part of his life and he like doesn't speak up about it. He doesn't speak up about anything, which I, I feel for him. I really feel for Julian because I understand that he goes through so much. But to counteract that, um, I couldn't connect to Julian. I felt for him, but I could not connect to him. I did not have a connection where I felt like I, I really wanted anything other than for him to be okay. I just wanted him to be okay and to get out of this situation. But that's it. I didn't root for him like I wanted to. And not only that, but I'm going to talk about this very quickly because my camera is about to cut off. Um, I have a problem with the villain, and I talk about it more in my review. Jul Julian's caretaker in the foster system, Russell, I think it's like his godfather, his uncle, or whatever, his psychological torture and physical torture of Julian is so outlandish. Spoiler, he puts him in a box for weeks. That is crazy. And there is no actual reasoning behind this except this BS reasoning, which I mentioned in my review. I don't know how I feel about this, other than the fact that I understand why it's not completely expanded upon, but then I don't. So I'm not sure if I would recommend a list of cages to you because I personally didn't like it. Anyway, I hope to see you down below in the comments, and I hope you subscribe. Bye!